Okay, it does seem like we're recording. We're good to go, David. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, okay, thank you for joining. Um, as I mentioned, Ruth is not here. I, there's a few things I'm hoping to talk to. Um, please feel free to add your own agenda items if you have anything that you would like to talk to. Um, I did some work over the last couple of weeks. I met with a, a really exciting group called p5.js. Um, they are a project that does, um, they use, they build a JavaScript tool uh, and their goal is to help, I think, bring non-STEM people, uh, artists in particular, um, to help them learn about technology and code. Uh, so I recommend going to be p5.js. It's a really fun project. Um, it's very similar to Chaos in that they value all con contributors and all contributions. Um, so I just, after talking with um, their lead maintainer, Chan Chan Yi, um, she did a presentation um, at one of the college events that we host here at GW. Um, I thought I would try to um, go through their, like pretend I was the maintainer or, or just go through their project from, from what I had learned ab about the spirit of their project and, and their, their, their focus. Um, and one of their, their main drivers is accessibility. Um, they really value translating um, their documentation into other languages. Uh, they, they really value bringing in multiple generations, um, older and younger, to as a, as a way to, to bring them into the technology fold and, and also a very inclusive um, project as well. So from that perspective, I thought, let me see if I can map their project to the UN SDGs. Um, so that was one thing I did, um, and I'll go through that in a couple minutes. And then I also had a really good meeting with um, Roberto uh, Cosme, De Cosme, De Cosmo, sorry, from the Software Heritage Foundation. Uh, sorry, the Software Heritage team. Um, they have been working for many years um, building a really powerful archive of software. Um, and they have some really nice APIs, and I think they might be a really uh, an interesting integration point for our work um, because they're not like just focused on GitHub. They are focused um, on a much broader um, source of, of basically all publicly available software. Um, so they, they built um, ways to grab all of that software and archive it and update it. Uh, and I think it would be a good place for our SDGs to live and, and maybe integrate with their API so that we can search across not just GitHub, but GitLab and Bitbucket and many other sources of, of uh, software. Um, so yeah, so let me, um, and then the, the last thing I was hoping to, to talk to um, and spend most of the time today actually is to to go over the the scope document that we have, and primarily I want to I want to start to understand like what is the format and the process that we're going to have for agreeing on on what our scope and and goals and priorities are. Does that sound good? I don't see any faces. Um, I'm feeling lonely. All right. Um, well, then I'll jump right in with the p5.js um, work that I did. Again, I am I am not an expert here, so I just want to. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So I'll just well, let's see where. Okay. All right sharing this and I'll jump over to the document. Um, so this is, sorry, this is our scope document that Ruth shared. Um, again, Ruth apologized, she couldn't be here today. She's busy traveling. Um, I'm not even sure where she is. She, she might be in the US. She's, I know she was in Germany last week. So she is the jet setter. 
I'm a little bit jealous and I'm also not jealous. If that makes any sense. Um, so at the bottom of this document, um, I just started an, a note section. And what I did, um, and, and please feel free to jump in and, and ask questions or um, tell me your thoughts. But this was sort of an experiment where I was trying to see what would it be like from a maintainer perspective to try to figure out how their project addresses the different UN SDGs. Um, it was a great learning exercise for me um, having just learned about this p5.js project, which I talked about already, but I think it's a really cool project. So I just went through all the, the UN SDGs and tried to figure out which ones might map to this project. Um, again, this is not, <laughs> this is a draft and certainly not, this is just an exercise, um, but it was fun, fun to do. So I'm just going to go through real quick and see what I did. Um, so I just pulled the goal, target, and indicate, indicators um, so that you can see what it looks like. Um, and what I'd really like to do, and I have, didn't have time to do this, but I want to talk to the maintainers and see how they can, at the project level, develop indicators so that we could measure how they're, how they're at a, on a very small scale. Like, are they adding an employee? Um, you know, that maybe is addressing one of the things. Are they, what are they doing? So um, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all. I think this is a clear focus of the p5.js um, goals. Um, this is the targets, ensure equal access for women, men to affordable quality technical vocation. Um, this is really right in their sweet spot. Um, I still struggle though to figure out how to map the indicator that that the UN has um, to to what the the p5.js project is doing, um, but maybe they can show or demonstrate that they've trained a certain number of people, and maybe they have those broken out by demographics. Um, but that's the kind of thing that I'm I'm thinking um, we can start to do. At the very least, we can just say that. Um, these are the ones they're attempting to address. Um, and then the indicators, getting detailed indicators would, would be gravy. Um, so not saying that like we need to <laughs> have it fully thought out. Um, but yeah, that, and so I, I went through and said, okay, I put the goal for, this is related to the number four UN SDG. The target is 4.3. And then the indicators are 4.31. These are all defined, just pulled directly from the UN SDGs. Um, and, you, and you can go down the list um, and see. So please look at this on your own time. I'd love to see if anybody has any thoughts on, on how to develop specific indicators for a project um, or if it's just enough to include this. Um, or, or what we should be thinking about as we design our standards. Um, uh, and I, I'm, again, not the metrics expert, so I'm, I'm looking for any help on, on how to make that happen. Remy, yes. Cool. So awesome. Thank you for sharing this, this work. Um, one idea we have, not saying it's the only way or the best way, but... Uh, we have a, there's a project that exists in the open source community called Cookie Cutter. It basically just allows you to create that will ask questions from the user and that they can like create and then it creates like a, a JSON file with the answers. So, um, I can imagine if you have a record of like what questions you were asking yourself, we could maybe translate that into a cookie cutter config and then uh, create just sort of like a really simple, like, does your project benefit the following this community? Yes or no. Does it benefit this kind of a community? Yes or no. Does it address this type of a goal? Yes or no. And then from that, you can fill out like this kind of a checklist, but Having the checklist itself, I think, is a great start, too, because you can just say, like, you know, command line tools, you know, 50-50 on whether or not that's going to be useful. But, you know, anybody can pull down a PDF or a doc and fill it out themselves. So I think this is a good start for for manual. But um, 
yeah, the the broader question of like, how do we just like extrapolate that from what's in a repository um, is a is a cool further question to be to be explored. Um, one of the things that we plan on using is repository topics. So GitHub has those. Not everyone has those. It's like a GitHub platform specific feature. But if someone has included certain topic language that applies to an SDG, then maybe we could use that as a way to like pull from the data. Additionally, in a document like this, we could recommend like you should tag your repository with these repo topics if they are related to these SDGs. And then that way it would make it easy for us to programmatically draw that out and fill in some of the blanks. Those are the ideas off the top of my head based on what I'm looking at right now. And I'm going to stop talking. I, I love that. I love um, the cooker cutty, uh, cutter ideal because it's so tangible. Like we can just create something um, that, that can be used and can be an, <laughs> a product of our working group and, and something that, that others could, could start to use and, and test and, and play around with. Um, what's the, is it just cookiecutter.org or what's the, how does that? I'll dig up the link one sec. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, any other thoughts? Okay. Um, yeah. So again, this was just an exercise. I, I, learn by doing so <laughs> I was let me try to see um I was I was kind of surprised that um there were so many uh, uh of the SDGs that I felt um could fit some of them felt like they weren't a great they weren't ideal um trying to remember right like build resilient infrastructure some of these SDGs the way they're written um promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. I felt like the target maybe fell, fell into what they're doing or maybe a piece of it was being addressed by P5.js, but obviously we're not talking about like building. P5.js is a, is a technology. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a tool, but it's, it's not like infrastructure. <laughs> um, but it is Kind of can be used a little bit as infrastructure for teaching. So I, I wasn't right. It's you start to parse the words and um and I was I was I'm I'm not sure how to make those decisions. Um who who an authority would be to make those decisions about whether whether it really isn't meant to to fall into this kind of a category or not. Um so they were they're really doing like a lot of work to try to get um out to communities that aren't normally um you know technical or, or understanding the technical or, or feel like they're coders so so they're they're really making this effort to, to that kind of falls in line with this like extending the 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 access um in fact access is like their their main priority so i i, I struggled here i was trying to figure out how some of these goals if they if they are meant to fit or if they're not if they're really talking about building cell phone towers and um and train lines and things like that um versus uh technology like open source projects jonathan sorry go ahead yeah i think apologies if i think i love through this but i think it would help to get some thoughts flowing um i think you brought up a good way to frame some of what we're trying to do and how open source software relates to the SDGs. So on the, the easy level, let's say, is there is some software that is specifically built to address the SDGs and advance their goals. Uh, that's probably gonna be few and far between, but those are projects where we can talk to the maintainers and say, hey, is this project built for the SDGs? How is it built for the SDGs? Which SDGs is it built for, et cetera. But then there's just, software that is used by people who are advancing the SDGs through one way or another. By building cell towers, I have no doubt open source software is used in the process of building physical infrastructure in a lot of these communities. So identifying those 
libraries and repositories that are useful in that sort of endeavor, I think is also going to be important and a little more difficult. And then there's the hardest level of something is happening that does advance the goals of the SDGs. And that thing also uses open source software. For example, I think SDG 4 is generally around higher education and access to higher education. Uh, so any endeavor, a mentorship program uh, in a typically unaddressed community uh, is advancing the SDGs. What software do they use to run the mentorship program? Are they using open source software to teach students to like upskill people? Like that all seems very relevant and how can we track that? So again, those three, three tiers, a software package specifically built to address an SDG, a software package used by someone who is specifically tasked to advance in the SDGs, and then a software package who just is being used by someone who just so happens to be advancing one of the SDGs, probably unintentionally. Yeah, I think that's great to to clarify those distinctions. Um, this this was definitely an exercise to to address that first group. Um, the second group, I I have been thinking that it's that that's out of scope for our team. Um, where I've been thinking is that maybe not completely out of scope, but I've been thinking that's the S bomb problem, and that. CISA and those kind of groups are working really hard on the SBOM and then we will benefit when they figure that out. Does that resonate with you or do you think we we do need to address that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's open to discussion. Um, yeah, I think SBOMs are more software dependency related, but I'm not entirely sure. Right. Well, I, th I thought that's what you were referring to with the, the second group. No, so software. So I'm thinking, um, let's say I run a, a organization that goes out to uh, try to bring higher education to more people. I use, And I use open source software in that endeavor. That open source software should be cataloged in whatever we build as critical to advancing the SDGs because it's actively being used to build core infrastructure. It's not necessarily a dependency to another piece of software. It's just software that's used to advance the SDGs by an organization set out to advance the SDGs. Hmm. Okay. I was hopeful that the SBOM would, would be sort of a, a path for that where any project is, is listing their dependencies. Um, but Am I just not understanding it? Or you're talking about like the specific package expend, ex, um, dependencies or, or what the SBOM is doing, but they're, they'll be missing some other ones? Um, let's, let's step away from software for a second. So let's say I'm, I'm addressing uh, SDG4, which is higher education, and I'm Google Summer of Code, and I'm using my program to go out and educate people as to how to contribute to software and use that to improve your community, your local community. I would then argue that Google Summer of Code is critical to advancing the SDGs. That's kind of what I'm saying. So, and then we would me metricize that, I don't know, determine metrics to analyze how impactful that program is in advancing the SDGs it's setting out to address. Uh, yeah, and then if we take that one more level in, okay, what are the software communities that Google Summer of Code is interfacing with to help upskill people and introduce them to technology to improve their local communities? And then those software packages would also be critical to advancing the SDGs. Nothing to do with dependencies, though. So I guess how I would... I don't think it's our job to um to build a standard for the google summer of code that they would that they would use what i think would be nice is if any project that is um it has a relationship with google summer of code they would be able to to say um that they are addressing target for 4.4 
and and put the specific numbers around how many interns you know they they are supporting and then you know if every project that google sum of code did that then we would we would be able to aggregate and have all these these metrics that we can track and apis we can build around that yeah i think that's a good place to start okay um because yeah yeah that's drawing the lines around what we're doing from a metrics and standard perspective uh, i think it needs to be well-defined <laughs> boundaries um but i'm not clear on exactly what those are yet either i think we we need a lot of help from others to to make that okay um good conversation thanks thanks for that anybody else have any thoughts on this it did feel a little bit like opening pandora's box when by trying to do this exercise <laughs> um i was like oh this is gonna this is gonna be hard you know how especially when you start thinking about auditing or how are you gonna verify truth um the, the, it starts to get really sticky really fast um remy yeah go ahead so for auditing um there's a tool that that we've used in our ospo called repo linter that basically just checks on whether or not a file exists within a repository. It might be that, for example, like Google Summer of Code requires that there is some kind of file that exists in a repository or maybe language that exists within a file within a repository that identifies it as a Google Summer of Code project. So we could use tools like RepoLinter to check for the existence of files or content within files as a way of auditing and collecting that metadata to possibly associate with, you know, open source programs that apply to sustainable development goal X, Y, or Z. Additionally, if there was like other keywords that we could identify, if it's like rural or water quality or whatever, we could potentially create a repo linter config they would go through and scan for those types of keywords and or just use the GitHub API itself potentially. Yeah, to look Remy, I love this. So I, I do a lot of keyword matching. I've never heard of RepoLinter. You may have just saved me so much time, <laughs> but I use a lot of keyword matching for uh, looking for uh, what scientific domain a piece of research is used in or, or built for. And it works pretty well, but it's really important to have a really good keyword um, database. So I think if we could build a specific keywords for SDGs, we it's it's incredibly easy to access GitHub and GitLab API and do a quick, quick quote unquote query. Awesome. That's really cool. I love that. Um okay, moving on the the let me see. Um let me see if anybody else added anything in. Um Remy, so do you wanna maybe help build that? Can we get that started? Because it's not that big of a task pretty straightforward list that we just refine over time. Is there a repo somewhere? I don't know. David, do we have a repo? We can just start throwing some stuff together. You are you are jumping ahead. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> um we we have this um sorry the document that I showed you is where we started. Um so this is our scope and goals document. Um I'll put that in the chat too, just for everybody. We could though, David, we could spin up uh, just a working group repository where people could, um, you know, maybe throw together prototypes of something they wanted to collaborate on or bits of bits of code. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily like if, if something spun out into a project, then we could create a project repo within chaos for it. But right now, a working group repo may give us just a place to put some things that we want other people to look at. That's perfect. Ruth and I had talked about that, how to, to do it, and I, I wasn't sure on the mechanics. So let's make it happen. Um, okay. I think I can I can probably do that. I'll, I'll have a look on the, while we're on the call. I do have org admin. I should be able to create one. Perfect. Thank you, Don. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so... Because the idea um, was to take all of these goals and things as we're as we're 
starting to agree on them um, and, and putting them over into a repo um, and making it more official. Uh, so yeah, um, let me just go back here real quick. So um, the one other point that I wanted to mention, and I don't want to dwell on this at all. Um, I'm, I'm, ha I'm, I'm, I'm having a meeting with Roberto the Cosmo scheduled. He's the lead maintainer of Software Heritage. Um, it's a really cool project that I mentioned that encompasses um, a, a broader software archive that, that spans GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and all of those. It has an API. Um, I think it. I think it might be a good place for us to integrate with it. But I, but I'm going to talk with them further and and see. Um, and and they're. I think they're looking to 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 talk to institutions, research, and academic to figure out how um, they can modify their APIs to to support um, like measuring your research, um, your the what software is 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 used in for various research impacts. So I think this would align really nicely with with some of the their goals. Um, so so we'll see if there's any if we click there and, and maybe I can get Roberto to to come on to one of the future calls. Also other um topics I'm open if anybody has any topics like Jonathan maybe you'd like to demo your mapping work that you've been doing. I know Ruth um said she got to see it in Germany and, and thought it was pretty cool so um that the floor is open so that i'm not talking at people all, all the time um all right so jumping back to the um the document that we have right now i i i love that we're moving already quickly to to having it be a github repo i think that's that's great i'm also not clear on the process like how we're going to make changes how we're going to agree upon changes don or people in chaos that have done this before i'm i'm i'd love any help anybody on this call that has has thoughts you know how do we decide that maybe somebody's good idea is out of scope um you know for our project do we vote do we do we um you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with, with the process. Um, I want it to be very democratic and I want everybody's voice to be heard. And, um, and so I just, I just don't know the mechanics on the best way to, to make that all happen. Yeah. So, so the, the chaos project as a whole operates more on a consensus basis than a voting basis. So we, um, it would be unlikely for us to, to vote on anything relative to a working group. So, Usually when we're trying to decide, say whether to merge a PR, if there's something controversial, we would bring it into the working group meeting. So this is how we've handled a lot of the metrics and a lot of the metrics models is that if it's, you know, if it's a, it's a simple change, it's not a big deal. Somebody who has access just merges it. If maybe someone's proposing something that we're not sure, we think it needs a little work, we're not ready to merge it. A lot of times we would um, bring it into to this to this meet and maybe maybe do it at the end so that people who aren't interested in in you know live reviewing of a, a PR or a concept um you know they can they can drop off if they're not if they're not interested but that's that's typically how we've how we've done things in other working groups I don't know Kevin if you have anything you want to add to that Kevin's been uh, no, involved I think uh, uh I, I think your response was uh was was pretty accurate Okay. All right. Well, then let's jump to that exciting or possibly boring part of the meeting where we just go through uh, our scope and goals and, and talk to it and see if we have agreement. Um, I have not like thoroughly gone over this myself. Um, I've added a few things here and there. Um, I, I'm used to working in a little bit of a different way where you, where we have more, um, requirements and use cases. So, but, but I'm, I'm fine going through this. So, um, yeah, this is a chance for us to, to talk about our overall scope and, and goals and, um, and come to some kind of agreement and, um, 
and it, we don't have to finalize anything, I don't think today, but we can can start the conversation. And and then as we move this over to the GitHub repo, we can we can keep the conversation going. Um, are we comfortable with this scope? UN SDG Working Group aims to empower source open source communities with metrics to align their contributions with UN Sustainable Development Goals and enhance the role of open source in achieving global sustainability. I don't have any problems with that. Anyone else want to tweak it or? Once. <laughs> So one thumbs up. Thanks, Divya. All right, um, let's go through the goals. Um, I see Angela, you just were addressing one. Do you want to talk? So for your comment, I, I, I'm a social scientist. So my first question is what evaluation is already going on and can we fit into that? This approach is very much like look at the software first. So my question would be, um, I'm sure that the UN already does a lot of evaluation. I'm sure that they have a known indicator set that they use for outcomes and impact evaluation. What might be useful in addition to all of the things that we have listed here, again, in addition to the software first approach, is to kind of say, how would we fit into um, an existing UN indicator set? So um, that we are something that would be open source or just software in general would be something that would be evaluated as part of the impact indicators. So this is important for a couple of reasons. One, it automatically communicates to whoever is doing the evaluation of whatever projects that software is important and something that they should think about. Um, but two, it um, it, uh, it it gets us integrated in a way that's sustainable versus it being sort of like our responsibility on the software side. So I think, I don't know that there's any way for us to get into that indicator set, but if we could ask or think about how we might do that, I think it's important for us to, to get on that impact side of the evaluation that's already happening. Um, okay, I think that's good. Um, my understanding from the Ospos for Good meeting was that they have a feeling that open source software is contributing to the UN SDGs, but they aren't, they don't have any way of measuring it. Right. So the first brush is to just have a binary variable. Well, it would probably be a a a, a categorical variable. Are you using open or are you using software to help deliver your program? Yes, no, I don't know. If you are using software to help deliver your program, is that software open source software? Yes, no, I don't know. Um if you are using open source software, are you sharing that software with relevant parties? Yes, no, I don't know. It could be that simple, three variables in an existing indicator set. And we might have to make those up. Um, but they're they're evaluating at the UN. I mean, they evaluate all the time. So I, it would just be, can we get those three questions or something like that into existing evaluation? And then after we see where software is being used, then you go through and you would do qualitative evaluation, right? You would tell the story, connect with the project, look at the repo, um, all that stuff. But this is hitting it from the other side, not the non-software side. Angela, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. I think this is a great approach. Oh, cool. Find people that are advancing the SDGs, ask them if they're using software and what software they're using. Yes. And then are they sharing? I think that's important to get at. And that was the last question. Are you sharing that open source software with other relevant partners? Um, because I do think that one of the things that would ultimately be amazing is to develop that sort of a, a repository or the, um, I'm sorry, David, you referred to it earlier. It's those people we saw at Curious, the software heritage folks, um, something like that for the UN would be really cool. All right. So this is <laughs> I'm I'm clearly not aligning with you and Jonathan 
to me, this is out of scope because I don't, I don't know how to access all the projects in the world that might be addressing SDGs. I do know how to, 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 to try to address all the software projects. And I, so I guess I'm not sure what you're asking to build. Um, so uh, it would be um, it, the the first step that we would have to take. I, I don't think it's out of scope. I think that it's it's the it's the approach from the organizational side, right? Which I do understand why we would feel like we wouldn't have any power there because none of us works for the UN, or if we do, none of us knows about it in this room. Um, but the question is, who at the United Nations is responsible for evaluation? And if we could get in touch with that person um, to talk about how we would incorporate software variables into existing evaluation at the UN, that's the question. And if we could do it, then we would devise some questions, and that would we would be that would be working while we were doing all this on the other side. Yeah, I think if we think about this as a research question, the overarching research question is: to what extent is open source software being used in programs that are actively addressing the SDGs? Beautiful. And it's just a simple survey that a couple of questions that are added to the current survey that exists within the UN, which we're assuming it exists, and I think is a very safe assumption. Uh, and through those questions, we start to answer that question. Through those survey questions, we can answer our research question. Um, okay. I mean, I think that's that's fine. It's very, um, it's very social science approach. <laughs> it's straight, it's straight up impact evaluation. That's what it is. I mean, I d I definitely think we need to knock on all the different doors and 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 talk to people to make sure that we're not stepping on any feet or or doing something that doesn't align. So I I couldn't agree more with that. Like I know the DPG Alliance is doing some kind of work already in this space. I know that um, GitHub has some way of of you know defining or giving you a, a back a, a list of some projects that are based on SDG focus areas. So how are they doing that? <laughs> What's their, well, that we want to work with them or, you know, make sure that we're, we're aligning. Um, Remy, go ahead. Yeah, that's, I just put it in the chat that I think the Digital Public Goods Alliance has an inventory of their own projects. And from there, we can start asking some of the questions. I mean, granted, those are the folks that have already sort of self-selected and said, yes, I definitely am doing SDG related work. So maybe that's like people who've already made it through the funnel that we're trying to create. But um, folks who are thinking about going through there, that is definitely an integration point where I, you know, to help us figure out the universe of software that's out there. Um, driving people towards DPG, I think is is definitely a, a, a key part of the, you know, figuring out where the inventory is. Does anybody on this call have any DPG Alliance contacts? Um, I would be happy to reach out with them and, and try to make sure that we're, we're in cahoots. I know he's not here this time, but Michael Downey was here last time and he's on the UN side. I wouldn't be surprised if they had some connects through the UN OSPO. Okay. Yeah, he's he's a member um, of this working group, so he's kind of our main UN connection, to keeping us on track. So I'll, I'll reach out to him about about this and DPG Alliance. So. Great. Okay. Um, I just added this sentence. I can't take notes and talk <laughs> at the same time. This is this is a uh, I'm challenged to say the least. Um. I'm just going to go down the actions or the the goals and and um for the next ten minutes, and then we'll 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 have to kick the can for the for the next time. Um, I appreciate all this con this conversation. This is great. So, and then anybody else, please jump in if you have any thoughts. All voices are welcome. Um, let's see. Let's just start with goal one: develop a framework of metrics that allow open source communities to assess their contribution to specific. SDGs. Um, I think I have Harper on, on everything because I'm trying to keep the scope really small. I feel like 
chaos has a really good framework of metrics. I'm not even sure that we need a framework of new metrics, but but maybe we do. I think maybe we need indicators. Maybe that's the same thing. Um, <laughs> um, so I guess I'm fine with it, but I'm worried that it's what I'm thinking that our our main goal is is to 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 create some kind of a standard that an open source project can 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 a, a standard and and um, or a format. Um, so whether it's a JSON file or a readme file or, or something that they can just put in their project. Um, do we think it's bigger than that? I might uh, I might make a comment here. In, in chaos in general, we've been kind of, so we are, we're still defining metrics and we're, we're trying to figure out which metrics are important. Uh, but we've, we've been kind of moving away from the, the idea of a, kind of a, a the, the framework of metrics and we moved into the idea of kind of creating a, a practical documents that can uh, uh, explore how communities can use metrics and I, I know uh, Don who's on the call now has been has been working on some of those documents uh, perhaps uh, a, a practical document uh, regarding uh, how to use these metrics uh, to explore the community would be a, a better deliverable than a metrics framework or or metrics models associated with uh, with this. I, I don't know if I don't know if Don could comment on that. The practice guides, maybe. Yeah, um, one of the things that we're we're talking more about is that the the metrics models themselves are a pretty inflexible framework that, frankly, haven't gotten a lot of traction, and people don't really know what to do with. Um, because it really, the metrics models really just contain a list of metrics and and not a lot of context around those metrics. So we've we've kind of pivoted more towards guides. So the practitioner guides, I think maybe don't fit here because practitioner guides are designed for people who are kind of brand new to open source and are figuring out a way to get started and don't really know much about how to manage an open source project. So the, the template and the format for the practitioner guides is very specific to that audience. But what Kevin's talking about is we're talking about expanding those, um, the, the, uh, the idea of guides to contain other types of guides. So maybe like expert guides or, or some other type of guide. And so rather than putting together a, a framework, which tends to maybe not be as flexible and people don't necessarily know what to do with a framework, Maybe we put together a couple of a couple of guides that help people understand how to use the chaos metrics to measure the success of their performance toward the UN SDGs. So what that would look like, I I don't know. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not that familiar with the UN SDGs. I'm just kind of a I'm kind of a lurker in this meeting, um, despite getting pretty vocal. Um, but <laughs> But yeah, so I would I would say maybe maybe some type some type of guide, and I'm I'm happy to help um, help frame that and help help someone kind of work on it so that we end up with something that people can use. But that that might be a better approach. I like that. I think that's I think that makes sense. Um, I think it's a ch I think it's challenging. I, I there's so many metrics and how you know I know like the health of a project and those kind of things apply but i'm not sure exactly how they apply <laughs> so um yeah i think that that would that that would, that would be interesting i also um i think there's an opportunity to have i don't know if it's a practitioner guide but but more of an entry level guide because i i feel like people that are non-technical could have a really nice entry point here like i was able to go to a project that i didn't know about and had just you know, read the documentation and talking to the maintainer was able to, you know, make my best guess at what SDGs they were addressing. Um, and I think I'm not too far off the mark. And I, so I think other people could do that. They could not even be associated with the project, but go in and do that, that work. Um, and if we can start adding like those linter tools or the keyword matching and some other things to, 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 to help do that work, 
um, it could be a really powerful way to bring more people into the open source world that are not necessarily technical. So yeah, and what I what I would recommend is we can we can use this brand new repository that we we just created, um, and we can we can create a couple of issues for the guides that you think that we need. So I would start with an introduction guide. Um, the, like I said, the practitioner guide format doesn't really doesn't apply to this because it's, it's very specific. It's got sections for making improvements to your project. Um, it has things that, you know, maybe, maybe aren't going to apply in the same way. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about like the practitioner guide template, but if you create a couple of issues with the types of guides that you think that we need, um, then we can start, we can spin up some documents and start collaborating. And if we... What I found was that I worked I worked kind of in parallel on two of the guides, the introduction guide and a random guide that I picked. It just happened to be responsiveness because that helped me figure out what I needed to say in the introduction guide to introduce um, the other guide. And it helped me uh, really come up with, with kind of a format for, for what information we thought we needed. So it might make sense just pick a couple of the guides and start working on them. And then we'll pretty quickly figure out whether whether the format that we have is the right one, whether we need to add some things, maybe how we need to talk about it and whether we need to split some of it out into additional additional guides. But we could have like, we could have a series of like, you know, UN SDG metrics guides, for example, that have whatever whatever template and format makes the most sense for for all of you. Fantastic. Thanks, Don. This is great. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're at time. Um, thank you so much for setting. We have a GitHub working group GitHub repo. That's fantastic. Thanks, Don. Um, and we have a lot of <laughs> good thoughts and direction. Um, really, really quick, just to take too much time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just for full transparency, I'm going to start working on the keyword list and scrape in some repos because I'm already doing this. And I can just add this to the scientific keyword matching. And it shouldn't take too much time. Uh, so I hope everyone's okay with that. That is fantastic. Um, that's great. And if you want to present on that next time, um, or if you don't want to commit to that, that's fine too. <laughs> no, I, I'd be happy to share whatever progress I get to. I have two conferences coming up, but hopefully I can get a good good chunk done. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. That's, that's fantastic. And, and Remy, I'll reach... I'll reach out to you, dude. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to reach out to Michael and and talk about getting a connection with the DPG Alliance. Um, and I'll work with Ruth about transferring some of this documentation over into the, the new repo. Um, and yeah, please jump in and, and add comments and 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 make make suggestions and and changes and, and let's keep moving forward. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate your time. Take care.